Welcome back. Now, are we becoming a cash-free society? One of the answers is found in the country's first mobile money and visa prepaid card. Reload mobile money is sold off the shelf like any other item. Account holders have access to all the benefits of prepaid airtime and electricity, as well as instant money transfers with the additional convenience of a card. Maybe you're tired of old-school banking. Or maybe you've never trusted banks to look after your hard-earned pennies. Enter the country's first mobile money and visa prepaid card. Historically in South Africa, it's been very difficult for the man in the street to open up a bank account. A person would have to go and walk into their local bank branch, fill in a mountain of paperwork. It's a very intimidating experience uh, for the consumer. And there's very high fees associated uh, with the bank account. So our whole vision with Reload was to simplify that process. For just 30 rand, the card can be purchased at most retail stores. People use Reload for different reasons. Estelle Smith draws cash, budgets her weekly petrol bill, and has even given each of her children a Reload card for their pocket money. I use it for my grocery money as well and I put some savings into it and I got ones for my kids as well and I put their pocket money into it. They've got the traditional bank cards as well but we find this more uh, economical. It's, it's cheap. It doesn't cost you money to swipe. Umpo Sejopolo's salary is deposited into a reload account and she's even started paying a housekeeper using the card. I do not actually accumulate all those transactional fees and all those other fees, bank fees, that you get with other banks. So um, swiping is free, well purchases at stores and stuff is free and using my card is actually very easy. I have service, cell phone banking, I've got internet banking, so Reload is very convenient. So it seems gone are the days of conventional banking. At just one rand a transfer and a six rand monthly admin fee, this product seems to be working well with South Africans who thought that storing their money under the mattress was a safer option. There is unfortunately only one expensive uh, transaction that is the nature of our banking environment, which is an ATM withdrawal transaction and that's industry costs. However, what we've done with Reload is we encourage our consumers to rather withdraw cash from the retail store and that's a flat, much more cheaper option. Reload has been operating in South Africa for just under a year and is hoping to roll out the service to neighboring countries in the near future. Jody Jacobs, Johannesburg. Well, according to a World Bank paper titled Financial Inclusion in Africa, less than a quarter of adults on the continent have an account with a formal financial institution. With the advent of the smartphone, many now rely on their phones to transact. This has come to be known as mobile banking. This evening on Moneyline, we take a look at the growth of mobile banking in South Africa and how it could help the unbanked of the country. For this discussion, I'm joined by Johan Mayer, who is CEO and founder of of Wallatech joins us from our studios in Cape Town. Johan, thanks for your time this evening. Uh, what is the state of mobile banking in South Africa? Uh, <coughs> hi, thanks for having me, Siki. Uh, currently, mobile banking in South Africa has been around for a while. Um, if you look at all the major banks, it's got mobile apps for the bank. But um, if you look at the unbanked population of South Africa, mobile banking is still, still far behind. Um, I, yeah, so I guess it's, it, it needs to grow a bit, um, but it's been, yeah. <laughs> and, and why is it behind for, for the unbanked? If, you, if one thinks about markets such as East Africa, for example, um, in Kenya where they have M-Pesa, and that seems to have um, taken off like wildfire in East Africa, why is South Africa not picking up that baton? Um, one of the biggest reasons is... Um, well, due to the regulations and, and banking regulations put in place by the Reserve Bank and other the organizations like BASA. And people are still just not educated about mobile banking. They, they're too scared to use the product. If you look at Kenya, Kenya um, with M-Pesa spend a lot of time educating the people about mobile banking, about the advantages of the product. Plus, they made sure that the product can be used. Um, yeah. they, had a lot of people on the ground educating people on, on, on how to use it, where to use it. And in South Africa, they 
uh, the, the companies just never did it. They, um, people are uneducated and, and scared. And let's talk a bit about that, the security factor, because the concept of having money on my cell phone um, is, is, can, can be quite daunting uh, for, for somebody who has not used traditional banking, I suppose, in the past. They might fear that if they lose their cell phone, all their money um, has also disappeared. So how does mobile banking actually work? Mobile banking, in the sense of, of, of e-money, if you don't look at the traditional mobile banking as f and B's app, but look at it as, as a digital form of e-money, it's actually quite secure because the money is password protected. Most of them are either protected by a password and an OTP as per normal banking. So it's, 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 it's secure. The money is still sitting in a, in, 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 in a physical bank account, yeah. a trust account, so it's not like the money is... Yeah, so it's, it's secure. Uh, uh, it's actually, I think, more secure than having the money in your pocket. <laughs> so it's definitely, you can't be marked. And if you lose your phone, you still need to get via, pass it by with, with a password and a PIN. So. so how much work do you think then that uh, South African um, innovators are going to have to do to educate uh, the unbanked market in South Africa to, to go this route? Because we know the costs that come with traditional banking and the costs that come with the rollout of ATM infrastructure and having to actually travel to a bank to draw your money and, and so on. Um, what sort of education do you think needs to happen here? I think the, the main thing that they need to do is to first off to teach people that it, it is safer and um, that getting the money via mobile banking, sending money, is it's a much safer option than, than, than going sending it via courier or sending it via a friend. So that's, that's a good place to start. But companies like Snapscan, who's been pioneering mobile payments in South Africa, is, is, it's done a lot of legwork in, in getting people used to the, op, the idea of paying by a phone. So I guess in a couple of years or yeah, a couple of years' time, people will get used to the fact of, of not taking out a credit card but taking your phone, which helps a lot. Um, unbanked people, I think the biggest hassle for them at the moment is they can't use their mobile money anyway. So by mm. getting them the, giving them the ability to actually be able to use it and will we'll help them educate, will help educate them and, and getting them used to the fact of using their phone. Right. Um, so, so making, sure, making so sure that yeah, we've got enough of those locations to actually convert the digital currency into, into usable cash. We'll leave it there. Thanks, Johan. Johan Meyer is I'm CEO and founder of Wallatech. Moving to West Africa now, and Nigeria's economic woes are going from bad to worse. It's now reported that foreign investors are selling off Nigerian stock. Several factors are driving that decision. An insurgency in northeastern Nigeria driven by Boko Haram militants, a currency that is struggling to recover and plummeting oil prices. All these factors are influencing foreign investors who have been struggling with the decision to stay or pull out. But it seems ongoing pressure on the economy is finally taking its toll. These revenues are down by over 50 percent. Exports are down, export revenues are down, government revenues are down, but imports are sticky upwards and the expectations of people are pretty high. So to make that adjustment that is required to bring people's expectations in line with the reality is a major problem. Foreign investors are taking flight, withdrawing 4.5 billion US dollars from the Nigerian stock exchange since September last year. But just what are foreign investors dumping? According to market reports, the relatively liquid banking sector is losing out, as well as the consumer and oil sectors. Nigeria's foreign reserves dropped to 34 billion US dollars by the 28th of January, down 20% from a year ago. Dozo Kumalo, Johannesburg. Our daily question and answer feature up next. Stay with us.